If Steph does not play, I give Houston the better shot, Stephen A, to rise up and just pride alone to win one game at home against Golden State. I believe Golden State will sweep this series, but if the Rockets are to win one game, it will be tonight. Thompson the inbound. Ariza will defend the inbound. Green off his foot. Rockets are going to win it. If you guys are working for the weekend, you are almost there. But first, first take. Happy Friday. Thank you so much for being with us. Gentlemen, you called it. The Rockets got that one. I don't know if we actually called it, but we gave them a shot. You did. Yeah. You were all right. Yeah, well. Skip Bayless, Stephen A. Smith, Molly Karam, how we doing? We have a lot to get into today. I think Stephen A. has a little bit of a delay, so it'll take a second for him. Is he there? I'm right here. Yeah, oh, we got yeah, us. we got you. Here we go. <laughs> All right, let's get right into a lot to discuss here. So as Steph Curry sat it again, the Rockets showed signs of life in Game 3, beating the Warriors on James Harden's go-ahead jumper with two seconds to play, winning 97-96. Harden went off, scoring 35 points with nine assists and eight rebounds. Klay Thompson went cold, going 0 for 7. According to BPI, the Warriors still have a 97% chance to win the series. Stephen A., how concerned should this Warriors team be? Well, they got to be concerned about Steph Curry, but outside of that, I don't think they have to be concerned about much. I don't think they have to be concerned about losing this series. I don't anticipate that they will put forth a duplicate performance compared to last night. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, you have Maurice Spates play well. Sean Livingston definitely played very, very well. I was incredibly impressed with the way that he performed, had that minutes restrictions to look out for uh, because he ended up playing about 30 minutes, which is right around the time uh, that they're going to allow him to play. They're not going to really allow him to play more than 30 minutes per game. But Sean Livingston played well. I give him a lot of credit for that. This kid, Ian Clark, in the minimal minutes that he played, actually 21 minutes, I thought he was incredibly impressed. Of Maurice Spates came off the bench and did his thing, but the other four starters uh, with Sean Livingston, as far as I'm concerned, didn't do much last night. Clay Thompson wasn't his particular, wasn't his regular self. He missed shots that he would normally make. He shot seven of 20 from the field, missed all seven of his three-point shots. Draymond Green looked absolutely normal, uh, just three of nine shooting, 9.7 rebounds, seven uh, turnovers. By the way, that wasn't good. Uh, I don't, don't, you know, Bogut is Bogut and Harrison Barnes. You expected him and Iguodala to be able to step up like they did in game two, or at least Iguodala did in game two with the absence of Steph Curry, but it didn't happen. But in the end, what this comes down to is that Golden State was still in a position to win this basketball game. They had 23 assists, but they committed 14 turnovers. I didn't think that they were their regular flu itself. They had a lot of opportunities to make perimeter shots that they normally make, and they missed those shots. And because they missed those shots, as opposed to being completely shut down by the Houston Rockets, I'm going to sit there and say it's not much to worry about. I thought last night was a game the Golden State Warriors should have won. They were supposed to win, but they weren't able to close the deal because they missed shots they normally make. That last play with James Harden, where he scored on Andre Iguodala, that was a clear push-off, no doubt about it. I totally understand in situations like that that you don't make that call if you're an official because it's happened many, many times where you don't get you don't call that against a superstar offensive player but it was clearly a push off and an offensive foul as far as I'm concerned and he was lucky to get those two points and obviously the turnover at the end by Draymond Green uh, who, who just lost his concentration and let the ball go off his leg it is what it is but in the end the the Houston Rockets offensively are about James Harden and pretty much nothing else um, and as a result I thought that Golden State should have won this game and Houston lucked up by winning this game but still in all, they lost. It's 2-1. You don't want to push Steph Curry to play if he's not ready. But if he is ready, you certainly don't want to sit him because you don't want to risk this series being tied 2-2. So, time out. You're saying that last James Harden play, you would have called the, the push off, the offensive foul on James Harden? I'm saying it was an offensive foul. I don't know if I would have called it because there's many situations throughout basketball history, Skip, where you see an official notice an offensive foul or a push off uh, could have easily been called by a superstar, a called against the superstar offensive player, and it doesn't get called. I'm saying it was a push off on the part of James Harden. I just don't know with the game on the line if you call that against him in that situation. Superstars get favorable treatment, and that was one of them. Especially at home. I yes. thought Golden State got robbed. 
That was so blatant, so egregious. What, what's another word that you use? Another over-the-top word? <laughs> anyway, it, it was just so bad that you have to call that, uh, albeit on the last play. I would have called it on the first play of the game, and I would have called it on the last Rockets play of the game because it's just such a blatant shove. Look at Iguodala. He just falls backwards, and that's the only way the space got cre created. And again, James made a nice little, he does his usual move, as he says, between the legs, step back, pull up, and it was a mid-range jumper, and he swished it. So I give him that. It was a big-time shot, a clutch shot. We've seen him do it before, but he got away with one there. So here's my takeaway. Is it possible that even without Steph Curry, we saw once again that the only team that can beat Golden State is Golden State because th this was a shockingly cold night, as Molly set up, for Golden State even without Steph. I mean, how many nights will we see Clay Thompson go 0 for 7 from 3? How many times will we see Clay, who can be a big time clutch shooter, miss a huge late 3 that he said felt good coming out of his hands and online all the way? And it missed. How many times will we see Draymond Green come up as small as he did last night? And I'm not just talking about the final play where he dribbled the ball off his ankle and out of bounds, but I'm talking about the numbers, Stephen A. He goes three for nine, seven rebounds, seven assists. Again, for anybody else, it would be okay to go nine, seven, and seven, but not for Draymond. And, and then I, I look at the, the rest of the guys, n just nobody had a night except for Spates. You love Spates. He's been playing big, literally, coming off the bench. He went 7 for 11 for 22 points. But what, what I was impressed with with Golden State was that despite all that, they fought their tails off down the stretch. That They played a hellacious good fourth quarter despite all the junk that went on early. And did you see what Ian Clark did in the fourth quarter? He makes four That's out of five shots. That's what I'm telling shots. you. Wow, out of Belmont University in it Nashville, wasn't just Tennessee. Space. I love it. I like I like Ian there, Clark. I like yeah, what cool. I saw yeah. from Ian Clark. Yeah, I know Ian that, Clark. that was yeah. impressive, especially under that kind of pressure. So they won the fourth quarter, 24 to 19, and it took a late, I thought, non-call that they should have gotten for Houston to survive. Now, my thoughts on Houston. I'm going to defend the Rockets one more time on this show because of what my eyes keep telling me. They don't quit. They haven't quit on this season. You can call them and dismiss them dysfunctional if you want. You can see that, say that James Harden and Dwight just don't mix, don't blend, don't click. I get all that. They were just okay last night. I don't know, they just kind of coexisted last night. But this team still has firepower and this team does not quit. So I'm going to say it again. Down the stretch, this team somehow made the playoffs by beating Oklahoma City, by beating Toronto, who, by the way, is now up two games to one on Indiana as we, after we wrote them off. And the, these same Rockets went to Cleveland, albeit without LeBron, and came from 20 down late to beat Kyrie and company at Cleveland. That's not quitting. That's not tanking. That's not giving up the season. And like you've made the point, you think from the top down, from maybe Daryl Morey's office down, that there's been some suggestions that they, they wanted to maneuver out of the playoffs so they, you know, they could be in the lottery, whatever. But, but the players play hard. And last night, they played hard from start to finish. They should have lost the game, but, but they were in the game. And, and they all played pretty well to me. So I think they're a very dangerous team because... You and I both agree. There's lots of firepower on this floor. I can go down these lines. Even there, you know, when you put Michael Beasley and Capella and these guys on the floor, stuff can happen. You can get in trouble if you're Golden State. So now we're back to the Steph question. Man, he's just, I think he's got to go. I think he wanted to go last night. I think he better go in game four. Or they're going to get in some big trouble here. Well, first of all, um, I didn't say from the top down. I said up top. I never accused the players of quitting. Okay. I never accused the players of tanking. Well, I specifically said, yeah. I said, I specifically said the front office folks yeah. would prefer that this team just go away and not make the playoffs. And I stand by that. The players themselves have never been about that. They've always, they're always going to try to win games. They're a bit dysfunctional at times, but they always are going to put forth the effort, and they do have talent. Yeah. But the flip side to it, the irony of it all, Skip, is that when you look at James Harden, the superstar offensive player that he is, he's a one-on-one -on -one guy. And his greatness, because of his one-on-one -on -one skills, 
it sort of stymies the rest of those guys offensively because they tend to sit around and watch him dance and dribble and do what he has to do, and it impedes their ability to do the kind of things that they're capable of doing because the ball doesn't move nearly as much as it should. Having said all of that, let's also understand something here. We understand it to some degree because James Harden is simply special. And one of the reasons why the ref may not have called that call uh, with, with, with about two seconds left when he, you know, danced, pushed off, spun, made the shot is because those similar moves was what James Harden did against Iguodala throughout the first three quarters to free himself up without pushing off. I mean, he just danced. He made a couple of moves on James on Iguodala where he was just schooling him. Now, Iguodala is a stout defensive player, and we all know that. But James Harden is just a special offensive player. And there were times when he got the best of Iguodala, and because of it, it was in such similar fashion that they may have missed the call as opposed to just simply electing not to make the call. But in the end, what it comes down to is that I consider the Rockets an inferior basketball team. That's just what I see to Golden State. And I think if Golden State plays the kind of game they're supposed to play with or without Steph Curry, they beat the Houston Rockets. But I do also believe that now is the time where if Steph Curry says he's ready to go, you got to let him go. Well, you're going to have to let him go against a Patrick Beverly who will be all over Steph. So if he has any issues at all still going on in that right ankle, if there's any delicacy at all, if it's fragile at all, better be careful. You, you better tread well, lightly. Yeah, that's true. But you could also use him as a decoy because I think Steph's mere presence on the basketball court is going to facilitate more fluidity within the offense and create more open shots for those guys. They were getting some of them last night. They'll get more of them with Steph Curry on the floor. Well, final thought on the whole idea of did the management want this team in the playoffs or not? The one thing management did not do, it did not try to shut down any of the stars on this team with quote unquote injuries. They, they could have said, hey, Dwight, he's got knee, he does have knee problems, as we well know. Had him last year in the playoffs. They could have just said, you know, we need to shut down Dwight. I don't know. They could have shut down James Harden for all I know. That's how you blatantly tank, but you're saying it was kind of between the lines more. Yes, it was trying to be between yeah. the lines. It wasn't blatant or anything like that. They were going to let them play. Yeah. They weren't going to throw games or anything like that. But they would not have mind if they had missed yeah. the playoffs with the way things were going. That's well, what I said. I I'm pretty sure everybody's going to play game four for the Houston Rockets. So it will be interesting. For sure. That one is on ABC 330 Eastern mm -hmm. on Sunday. Speaking of